All right, this is lecture outline 11. Uh, it's time to talk about intermolecular forces, or IMF. These are forces of attraction between separate particles, atoms, molecules, or ions. And uh, the key phrase here is separate particles. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, two different things that are interacting together. So uh, bonding, covalent bonds, those are within the same molecule. So now that we know how to build a good Lewis structure, how to minimize formal charge, how to make good molecules, especially covalently bonded molecules, now we're gonna talk about the forces of attraction between them. From generally weakest to strongest, we will start with, um, so dispersion forces, also called London dispersion forces, uh, abbreviated as LDF. They are when an instantaneous dipole an instantaneous dipole in one particle induces a dipole in a neighboring particle. The two dipoles are attracted to each other. And uh, instantaneous dipole, so that instantaneous dipole Uh, forms due to random fluctuations of electrons about uh, the nuclei for an atom. So instantaneous dipole forms due to random fluctuations of electrons. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. Dipole-dipole forces. This is when a permanent dipole in one particle attracts the permanent dipole of a neighboring particle. Uh, and so we're going from instantaneous, so existing for an instant, to permanent, so that's why dipole-dipole forces are generally larger than dispersion forces, or LDF. Hydrogen bonding is an especially strong version of dipole-dipole forces. Uh, and it results when hydrogen is covalently bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom such as nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. It is not a bond. Sort of a misnomer. Uh, but it is, it's hydrogen bonding, we'll talk about where the name comes from. Then ion dipole forces. These are forces of attraction between ions and polar molecules. Those are molecules with permanent dipoles. And they are especially important for the solubility of ions in water. And finally, ion-ion forces, those are going to be also known as ionic bonding, and those will involve full plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two charges between different ions, two separate ions attracted together. Uh, and we've talked about them as ionic bonds, and we will now call them ion-ion forces as well. And because they're full-on charges, those will be the biggest of our intermolecular forces in general. Now, uh, we're very interested in intermolecular forces, IMFs, because they relate to a lot of the uh, properties of su pure substances. Uh, we're gonna focus most of our time talking about boiling point and condensation point, where condensation is just the opposite of boiling, as we'll talk about too. Uh, melting freezing point, TF uh, and TB. Uh, so those are the two main properties we'll talk about. Uh, we'll also mention surface tension, viscosity, uh, delta H of vaporization, and delta H of fusion. And these are going to be the energies uh, associated with vaporizing. And fusion is going to be the solid to liquid transition. And so for all of these properties, so the property increases as IMF increase. So 
So stronger intermolecular forces lead to higher boiling points, higher melting points, higher surface tensions, higher viscosities, higher delta H values for these two. There's one property that's different, and that's going to be vapor pressure. The property decreases as IMF increase. So that's the one that's different than the others, and we'll talk quite a bit about vapor pressure too in this lecture outline. And then solubility. So solubility is related to ion dipole forces. And again, it's just different. So, uh, but the vast majority of the time we're gonna be talking about uh, these top properties. And what you need to remember is that these properties increase as intermolecular forces increase. Now, uh, let's talk about and draw pictures of each of these. We'll start with the weakest, LDF. And I want to draw you a picture of LDF between two helium atoms. And it's a relatively simple uh, molecule, or atom. So, uh, so if we have one helium atom, we might draw it as having a plus two nucleus, because it has two protons. And around that, in the 1s orbital are going to be two electrons. And these two electrons are going to be circling the nucleus. We know that electrons are only exist as probabilities and uh, within this 1s uh, sublevel, this 1s orbital anyway. But they're moving around and at any one instant, they could be both on one side randomly of the atom. So I'm gonna draw them right here and my description of, of LDF is gonna start over here and just, it's gonna start with uh, randomly, for approximately one over 10 to the 15th seconds, both electrons are on one side of the nucleus. Creating an instantaneous dipole. And I'll do my instantaneous dipole in a different color. creating an instantaneous dipole, dot, 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 because I have more to tell, but for here, so since both electrons are on the left portion here, that's gonna be my partial negative. Here, partial positive, uh, because the plus two is on the right half of the atom. Dot, 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 then there's in a neighboring helium atom, and that neighboring helium atom, plus two nucleus, has two electrons, and those two electrons are randomly moving around when they feel the presence of the neighboring partial, instantaneous partial positive charge. And so here's the two electrons evenly, distribute, stri evenly distributed when they see this partial or are attracted to this partial positive charge. So both of those electrons on some minor level. This is a snapshot picture. This is a very exaggerated as well. But think of the electrons as being attracted to this side, which sets up a partial negative and a partial positive in a neighboring atom. So, Randomly, there's an instantaneous dipole here, which, here, dot, 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 which induces a dipole in a neighboring atom.
and uh, these two dipoles are attracted to each other these two instantaneous because this induced dipole is still only there for 1 over 10 to the 15th seconds these two instantaneous dipoles are attracted to each other this is the LDF uh, attractive force okay. random fluctuations instantaneous and this is the weakest of the intermolecular forces because it has the instantaneous as well as uh, weak uh, and as well as being um, due to random fluctuations. So now if we draw the same picture for argon atoms, we'll draw a more general picture and uh, we'll use the term polarizability because we're going to draw an electron cloud around the nucleus and we're going to draw a deformed electron cloud. So here's an argon atom and it's got a nucleus and it's got um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it already deformed. So this is the electron cloud. And it is instantaneously, um, or and randomly and instantaneously uneven. So randomly, instantaneously. more the electron cloud is deformed to one side of the atom. The electron cloud is deformed on one side of the atom. And then that means that there's more electrons over here on the left so that's going to be partial negative, partial positive. So it's really just a, a slightly different version of the picture of here. Then we have another argon atom. And this time we'll draw the argon atom again. It's going to be start out even. So this is supposed to be an evenly distributed. And then uh, in response to the instantaneous dipole, so creating instantaneous dipole that then induces a dipole on the neighboring atom. So now in green, we have a partial negative and a partial positive as well. LDF is the attraction between these two instantaneous dipoles. LDF is the attraction between these two instantaneous dipoles. Okay. So there's two pictures of uh, dispersion forces with their descriptions. I'm sure this is going to be a homework question. Now more about dispersion forces. So all particles have dispersion forces. All the particles have LDF. For nonpolar atoms or molecules, LDF are the only IMF. And so it's going to be important to know when a molecule is nonpolar, and we'll keep talking about that, all atoms are by definition nonpolar. Remember, nonpolar 
mean, or polar would mean that there's an uneven distribution of electrons on a permanent basis in the, in the molecule. So LDF scale with the size of the particle, uh, period. And uh, for example, noble gases and boiling. Well, so, uh, and I've got some data here, but when we think about the boiling process, and we're gonna think about the boiling process for helium, helium is going to be a liquid, and then helium going to gas, that is the boiling process um, uh, as it becomes a gas. Then when we think about this, helium liquid is going to have each of the helium atoms close to their neighboring uh, atoms moving around, and for liquid, uh, IMF, uh, intermolecular forces are important because the IMF hold the atoms, in this case, close together. IMF hold the atoms close together in the liquid phase. On the other hand, gases, and remember the ideal gas law and how for ideal gases, the uh, attractions between atoms and molecules between particles in the gas phase was negligible. And for ideal gases, it was assumed to be zero. So for helium gas, so no or negligible IMF because the gas particles are far apart. And they're so far apart that they can't feel each other. Uh, we said prior that it was the forces of attraction which are negligible. Those forces of attraction are the IMF. And for helium, since it is a nonpolar atom, the only intermolecular force it has are dispersion forces. Okay. okay. So um, now, uh, so that's true for all of the noble gases. They're all atoms, they're all nonpolar. And what we can see is that the boiling point is increasing as we go down. And uh, while not proving this, what I would like to suggest to you is that uh, as we get larger and larger atoms here, so, uh, and larger atoms with more electrons. Uh, the atoms are more polarizable, meaning that sloshing of the electrons around the atom. So atoms are more polarizable. So larger atoms are more polarizable And more polarizable, uh, it leads to bigger in instantaneous dipoles. And Bigger instantaneous dipoles leads to stronger LDF. To larger uh, LDF, am I still on the page? Um, and that's going to lead to uh, higher boiling points. Okay. Um, and those higher boiling points means that it takes more kinetic energy, higher temperatures, before you can overcome the intermolecular forces in the liquid phase to make them into the gas. Okay, and instead of using larger uh, number of electrons, 
we're actually going to use typically molar mass. So larger molar mass leads to, because then they will have more electrons, they will be more polarizable. They'll have those electrons sloshing around the nucleus to create bigger instantaneous dipoles and have stronger, larger dispersion forces. Well, that was an example for atoms. This is an example for uh, molecules. These are alkanes. Alkanes have the general formula CnH2n plus 2. They're only carbon and hydrogen. And we can say uh, a couple things, and let me draw a pentane for you. Pentane has five carbons, it has 12 hydrogens. We're filling in all the hydrogens so that the carbons all have four bonds. We end up with 12 alkanes, remember have carbons connected by single bonds. Now, um, we said a couple things when we were talking about polar versus nonpolar uh, last lecture outline. First thing is, Anything made out of just carbon and hydrogen is nonpolar. That was one of our rules of thumb, and uh, that's still good. Anything made out of carbon and hydrogen, nonpolar. Now, we didn't talk too much about it, but each of these dipoles, carbon to hydrogen, does have a small difference in electronegativity that will lead to a small dipole, but then each of these dipoles is in... Uh, more or less opposite directions to other of the dipoles. And so what I'm going to say is, first off, carbon and hydrogen things, nonpolar, still our rule of thumb. Second off, you can, but you don't have to draw carbon-hydrogen dipoles on uh, molecules with carbon and hydrogen in them. All right, so nonpolar. If they're nonpolar molecules, that means that they're only intermolecular force or LDF. And what we can see here is that as we get to larger molecules with larger molar masses, the boiling point increases. And so what we're going to say is, so uh, molecules with larger molar mass have stronger LDF and higher boiling points. Molecules with larger molar mass have stronger LDF. And higher boiling points. And higher boiling points. On the other hand, if two molecules have the same molar mass, we would expect them to have the same or similar boiling points if they're both nonpolar. Now, sometimes it happens with isomers that you have molecules with the same molar mass and they have different boiling points. So how do we explain that? Well, the shape of the molecule matters. This is n-pentane, which is five carbons in a row. We're showing the space-fitting model right here. Here we have neo, something called neopentane, and for neopentane, there are five carbons, but they're connected all around the central carbon. Okay? And uh, these have the white molecules here shown, or white atoms are hydrogens. And so we've got a bunch of hydrogens around there as well. And the space filling model, which is what this is called down here, shows you more or less what the size is. But you can get the idea that with five carbons in a row, it's a longer molecule. With five carbons in a plus shape, it is a smaller molecule. And the idea here is 
that when two of these molecules interact, and instead of using this up here, I'm gonna consider this to be an oval, and then if we have another inter a molecule, it's gonna have the same shape. And these two molecules can have these fluctuations, um, these LDF between all of these atoms, and so there is more or less a surface area of contact that can have LDF. So this one has a larger surface area. Also called area of contact or area of interaction. for LDF to occur. Well, if I draw a second molecule here, no matter how you uh, pass these around each other, this one has a smaller uh, area of interaction. And so, smaller area of interaction leads to smaller LDF. Larger area of interaction leads to larger LDF. And we only ever talk about area of interaction or shapes of the molecules when the molar mass is the same. When the molar mass is different, that's easy. Molar mass, bigger molar mass, larger LDF. And the molar mass is the same, you will get into the shape of the molecule matters. And the more spread out molecule will have larger LDF. So larger LDF for more spread out molecule. And you'll see what this uh, means from the homework. And we'll have pretty clear examples. And then you can see that the boiling point of the larger surface area, area of interaction, uh, larger LDF, higher boiling point. Now a couple of examples here, um, and uh, these are going to be examples in which uh, we, uh, you don't have to know the names of these molecules, but I've put them here so I can draw them for you. The first molecule is butane. Butane, if you'll remember, has four carbons surrounded by hydrogens. Octane, oct, means eight. Eight carbons, um, we could call this C4H10, C8H18, we could fill in all the hydrogens around these to get the complete Lewis structure. But what we can see is that octane has a larger molar mass. Lar uh, and therefore larger LDF. More electrons to slosh around and create these uh, dipole, instantaneous dipoles. Higher, T sub B, where T sub B is the temperature of boiling, or is the boiling point. Okay. So, even though this one has more surface area, we don't mention that, we focus just on the uh, difference in molar mass. These two, butane versus something called 2-methylpropane, these two will both have, and again, you don't have to know the names, but they're just guides for me so I can draw them. Uh, these two have the same molar mass, and you can draw in all the hydrogens until they each have four, uh, each of the carbons has four bonds, and you will see that they have the same molar mass, but butane is more spread out,
Therefore, it will have the larger LDF and higher boiling point. It will also have a higher, in general, uh, freezing point, higher surface tension, higher um, delta H of vaporization, delta H of fusion, all those properties we started out this video with. But again, mostly we focus on boiling point. Those are the questions you can expect to see on the homework on the exams. We'll pick up next time with more of lecture outline 11.